This is a lecture from Open Tuition. For the free lecture notes that go with this podcast, please visit opentuition.com. All right. Although, as I said, that's the end of the numbers. Uh, you will see there is one more chapter, chapter 26, which says further points. Here, I'm not going to read every line to you. I'll explain what it's saying. Uh, but I do want you to read at home 165166 properly. But anything here won't be numbers in the exam. But the, you, you know what I mean when I say written questions, these statements, which of these statements are true sort of thing. There will be one or two testing you on what's in here. And it's really two things. The first, paragraph two, the definition of a subsidiary... Uh, I have said several times that we need to consolidate, we've got a subsidiary when we control, when the parent controls the subsidiary. You agree? Normally, normally the definition of control is if you own more than 50% of the shares, because I think you, you'd agree without doing law. If you own more than 50% of the shares, any votes, the parent will win the vote. Okay? Yes. And certainly any numbers questions, that's all that will be relevant. You own 60%, 75%, 80%. Fine, we control. You have a consolidated balance sheet, consolidated income statement. Strictly, though, it's a bit more than that. And you can see the, th the four bullet points at the bottom of that paragraph. Uh, that even if they own less than 50%, they're still treated as controlling if any of those four things happen. Power over more than half the voting rights because of agreements with other shareholders. Does that make sense? If you're more than 50%, you obviously win the vote. But even, even if you only own 40%, if there's some sort of agreement with others so that you still always win the vote, fine, you still control, you would still do with the consolidated accounts. Numbers wouldn't change, you know. But you'd still do it, even if it was only 40% shares. Uh, the same, they're all the same idea. Power to govern the financial operating policies and the statute or agreement. Well, again, whatever the shareholding is, if for any reason, statute is law, if for any reason, because of laws or agreements, we can control what happens, then again, we consolidate. The third one, power to appoint or remove the majority of the directors. I think you know what they mean. If we can, um, for any reason, if we've got the power to remove directors the managers of the company, we effectively are controlling. Do you all agree? And finally, D. Or D, D. Fourth. The power to cast a majority of votes at meetings of directors. Now again, it's not your problem for numbers. It doesn't actually affect the numbers at all, but in any numbers questions, it'll always be more than 50%. But just for these writtens... Be aware that although in real life it's less likely, there can be situations where, even if you own less than 50%, you're still treated as controlling, you would still do consolidated. Okay? So that's one bit. The other bit, you see, is something called associate companies. Now again, I want you to read it, and it's typed nicely, but listen to me carefully. Forgetting everything I said above, normally, control is when you own more than 50% of the shares. All right? Well, forgetting those points above, if you own 50% or less, then we don't control, we don't consolidate. But if you own more than 20%, so, we call the other company an associate. So, that's just terminology. Subsidiary, I've already said. 
is if you own more than 50%, we call it an associate if it's between 20 and 50%. Now that's just terminology, but I'll tell you in a moment the effect. So that's easy, that's just learning. And they can test you on that alone. It'd be a bit silly, but they could say we own 25% of X. Is it a subsidiary? Is it an associate? Is it nothing, you know? Well, if it's 20 to 50, we call it an associate. If it's more than 50, we call it a subsidiary. Okay? The effect of it, well, you already know... Subsidiary, you consolidate. And I'm not going to repeat, but you know, balance sheet, you bring in all the assets and you have non-controlling interest and so on. It's everything we've just done. If it's an associate, we don't consolidate like we did S, but what we do is this. We do two things. In our consolidated income statement, well, whereas a subsidiary, you bring in everything and then say, oh, a bit of it's owed to other people. If it's an associate, you simply add on at the bottom, add parents' share of associates' profit. I think for a second, as I've said, you won't get numbers. Not that there is a numbers problem, to be honest. You won't get numbers. But think about that for a moment. Maybe I'm P. Maybe I have a subsidiary S. Fine. We'll show the total profit and take out the bit that's sold to the other people. But maybe I also own shares in Inessa. But she's an associate. Well, we'll do our income statement, first of all, ignoring Innocent completely. It's me and subsidiary, yeah? But then at the bottom, we'll add on our share, 25% or whatever, of Innocent's profits. Okay? Does that make sense? The other effect, though, is in the balance sheet... Again, when it was a subsidiary, we brought in all the assets of the subsidiary and then showed separately what was owed to the other people, the non-controlling interest. If it's an associate, 20 to 50, we don't do that. We don't bring in all their assets or anything. But we will have paid money for the shares, do you agree? You know, I bought the shares in Innesa, we paid 10,000. Well, we simply show the investment in the associate as an asset, as a non-current asset. But what we show it at is cost plus parent share of returned earnings.
So the answer to consolidation, adding everything up, is unaffected. That's just me and the subsidiary, all right? But on the balance sheet, we show cost plus the profits, our share of the profits in the subsidiary, uh, the associate. In the income statement, we've added on to the profits our share of the associate. You look worried, Irina. No, no, I'm just Yeah, yeah. And it will balance, I mean. Yeah, yeah. Now, again, if they were going to ask the numbers, I'd show numbers. They won't. But if you think about that, I think it should make sense. Um, you know, just, just for two seconds, look back at... Look back at page 159. Page 159. I know there's no associate or anything, but if you look at X's balance sheet, that um, first bit on the test, on X's balance sheet, look, exactly as normal, non-current asset, X, investment at cost, 21,600, and so on. Yeah? Well, if S had been an associate... Then, when you come to do your consolidated balance sheet, you would show investment in S, 21,600, but you'd add our share of X's or S's, whoever it was, profits. Okay? And, of course, in our retained earnings, I've already said, because of the income statement, the retained earnings, you'd be adding to it our share of the associate's profit. Okay, so it, I think you understand me, it would balance. So that's really it. I'd better say, before anybody asks, what happens if we own shares in a company and it's less than 20%? Well, I'll write down, but in fact we do nothing. If it's less than 20%, then there's no name for it. It is just an investment. And I will write down, but the, I mean, the effect is we don't do anything. Uh, in the balance sheet, you show the investment at cost. Just like buying any asset. You've bought some shares, credit, cash, debit, investment. You've an asset for your balance sheet. In the income statement, well, effectively, you ignore it. You don't bring in any profits at all. Do not bring in any profits. So I hope I'm not confusing you. So that bit... Less than 20%, it's just an investment, it's irrelevant. But we do bring, uh, ah, I was going to say, I was going to say, dividends would still be relevant, but because of complications they cause, not here, but complications they cause when it's a subsidiary and associate, dividends will not be mentioned in F3. Okay? So clearly, if you own shares in any company, there are likely to be dividends, you would agree? Everybody? Oh, I'll answer your question, but it's irrelevant for F3. Okay. okay, so I'll answer you, but for F3, I don't care. There will not be dividends in this sort of question when it's F3. Uh, but, no, you'd, you'd bring the dividends in. Don't write this down, please. This is what I'm scared of. F3 is not relevant. You'd bring the dividends in as soon as they were voted on and agreed. Okay? The point is, I think I said last time, people propose this suggest a dividend, but it's only a suggestion until you've actually voted and agreed it, you know? However, I say again, I was answering Innocent because she asked me, for F3 irrelevant, uh, and it's because, although dividends wouldn't actually be a problem in this case, they do create a bit of extra work 
if it's an associate, or especially if it's a subsidiary, you can probably imagine. But that's something we save until F7, OK? <laughs> Otherwise, I don't know, read that yourself slowly at home, but I don't think there's much there. The main thing is, remember those limits. More than 50% subsidiary, 20 to 50 associate. That certainly is going to be asked. And given there are no numbers, that on its own I think is trivial. Okay.